and hello welcome back to our uh, radiation heat transfer transfer learning journal so in the last video we're talking about uh, divergence of heat flux and if you are you know wondering where you know this will pop up um, well you'll pop up in the energy balance divergence of heat flux usually it goes in the energy balance and you remember we have rho C P partial T partial equals to some um, yeah it will have some uh, heat flux term in it because this is like a per volume kind of a thing so Q conduction that's usually what we have uh, yeah like Q conduction you will have the heat flux uh, of conduction and then this is a general kind of thing and then you have a convection term as well so this convection will mainly deal with the advection meaning there's fluid carrying uh, um, stuff in and out this conduction, as you know, this is a heat flux vector for conduction. Okay. Conduction equals to minus K blah blah T. So yeah, you will okay, it should be a minus here. Yeah, because this is accumulation in the state control volume. Alright, so this is where this will come up, and of course you have uh, plus Q gen, right? Uh, dot. Okay, let me put the dot somewhere else. Q dot gen. So this is the, the rate of heat generation. This is the divergence of uh, conduction. So you will have a K. Uh, now, um, now plus square t it comes from substituting this uh, k delta t in here then there'll be a radiation um, divergence term where you will substitute uh, this in here into the into this whole term and that will tell you okay how much uh, heat am i putting into the system and then the convection term will be due to advection um, you have a uh, fluid or something flowing in flowing out that will carry a certain amount of energy within it and this is generation term within this uh, set um, body so this is just energy balance um, as we discussed before i mean yeah this um, for energy balance within the set medium this is what you need to do and this is where this uh, formula becomes useful for radiative heat flux which we will I'll put it here divergence of radiative heat flux okay so that's that explains uh, why this thing is important to do because you will need to do the energy balance over the control volumes okay so this is the this is what uh, we're talking about here so now let's move on to uh, to solve RTE for uh, 1d case so this is the most simple. This is the most simple of an analytical solution. And um, in fact, uh, analytical solutions are usually only available for 1D cases. When you get to 2D, it gets more and more complicated, uh, and 3D even. So the way to do that is with numerical methods, which we can talk about um, later on. So one the cases, this will be done analytically. Okay. So uh, let's move on to chapter 14, which is here in uh, Michael F. Modessa's textbook. And to simplify things further, so the simplifications of solving RTE. So we have a 1D, 1D case. Okay. So... I'm gonna spell check on this. Oh, simplifications. 
Sim it should be simplifications. Okay. One D. Uh, in a uh, plain medium, or uh, cylind cylindrical or spherical. So we start with plain media first. For starters, we we do gray, gray medium. So this is chapter fourteen. We do a uh, gray medium, plain parallel medium with a uh, gray. So no spectral dependence. That kind of makes things simpler. And what else? Okay, so let's just start with that first. And we'll get our radiation transport equation uh, somewhere on top. Where is that? We derived it a while back. Okay, here is where we are. Mm. Get one with the tau lambda in there. Okay, I'll just get this. So onward to the bottom. So here is our RT. Okay, this is in terms of uh, uh, tau lambda, and then we'll have one of course in terms of s. So let's click, take a look at the one in terms of s, it will be this. Okay, so let's replace with the total differential if you're not considering the uh, time derivative. Okay, so s hat. Okay, bullet, now blah i. <coughs> so now we start with this. Okay. So this is where we start. And then uh, we want to integrate across spectrum, which means we just, uh, i.e. we do integrate from zero to infinity d lambda. So I'm just gonna put dot 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 in here to represent, okay, we're integrating both sides of the equation. So when we do that, I think I should include a i lambda here, just to make sure things are clear. This has the spectral dependence on it. So now we integrate out the spectral dependence. So we will just have kappa i b. This uh, just becomes sigma. Nothing changes here. i will be here. And I think the spectral phase function should also, technically speaking, be based on the wavelength. But we integrate that out, so now it's no problem. And the last one is beta i. So if we were to refer to our textbook, uh, it is basically the same kind of a th uh, thing. When you have the emission term, kib, the extinction term, beta i, and the... Um, what do you call that? Scattering, in scattering term. Okay, so that's the DIDS. Okay, now if we were to solve it, and then you know, of course, we convert down. Oh, we can do this. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, anyway, you, we, we can solve. Um, if we solve the equation, we, we get a similar uh, uh, format of. Uh, if we were to solve it, we will get uh, an expression similar to what we have just now. Of course, what we needed to do is to change, we need to change uh, all the variables from s into tau lambda. Let me get all the lambdas out again. Omega here. Okay, so, that's, so instead of tau lambda, it should just be tau now. Oops, that should not be top omega. And this is i lambda i. i lambda becomes i. Uh, we have integrated out the spectral dependence. So i will remain here. And if we have the source, we define the source 
function as tau equals to all this thing here and and then we integrate right we integrate uh, what happened in the bracket yeah there you go we integrate and then we should get this So I shall type out and then you know I'll explain the yeah I shall type it out and explain the terms one by one. I R S hat. Why is there an R here? R actually um, it tells you the direction coordinates. So if you were to look at this uh, picture, okay. So if we have two planes, uh, you know, at each coordinate, okay from some uh, from some uh, reference point okay this is the origin for example so this is the vector r which uh, tells you the um, position okay right position Okay, this is the position of it, and S will be the direction. So depending on which side it's facing, this is S hat. So that's uh, so S I for example. We like to use I S I. So depending on where the position is and where where you're facing, the intensity will differ. So. Here, First, you have uh, R and S, S hat I. All right. So this is the picture we are seeing, and this is why it's uh, there's an extra R term down there. Okay. Okay. So what will it be dependent upon? Uh, it will be dependent upon the again depending on where where you start. You start the radiation from, so it will be some initial radiation, okay, from a, a certain direction. So let's say let's say you have this picture, and you have a plane boundary. So, oh, I'll show you a straight line drawing. So let's say you have this direction S I. I shall draw the straight line here. So remember, we were summing up the initial radiation, which is coming from here. And then also we sum up the source terms along the whole thing. And then each, each time we have a miniature source, we attenuate it exponentially according to the optical thickness. So this is the initial term. Okay. So as to why they put a subscript omega there, I'm not entirely sure now. But at least the physical meaning should not be too different from what we are discussing before. So the integral of uh, 0 to tau s of whatever, all of this, the source term, it is physically what it means should not change okay let me let me get back to the s hat okay s hat expert uh, e to the bracket tau s minus tau s prime okay the tau s prime Okay, so this is the integral of all the source. Okay, along the along the path, all the source terms along the path, which is the in scattering and the radiation. So nothing too different from what we are discussing before. Okay, so um, yeah, and the source term is defined here, which we were talking about before. If we define the source term as such, this is what, what the solution will be. Okay, and tau tau s of course is the integral of the 
the uh, extinction coefficient with respect to S. This is the optical thickness. Again, we discussed it before. And is the extinction coefficient measured from a point on the wall? Okay, so yeah, optical thickness based on wherever we start. So just now we started here. We started here. This is a tau s equals to zero. And then um, you increase all the way to here at tau s equals to tau s. Or rather we use tau s prime to make sure you know the, the variables are changed. I mean, the variables are consistent with what we are doing in the equation. So at least we don't have a confusion which tau s we are talking about. All right, so this is the picture again we're seeing. So how, how do we get... So the important things, how do we get heat flux, for example? Okay, so this is what we're going to start working on. Okay, so um, yeah, how do we get heat flux, and how do we even start getting uh, um, expressions for the intensity? So for heat flux, okay, we were talking about it here. We we're talking about it here. Yeah. Where is it? Yeah. This is how we calculate the heat flux. Okay, so to calculate heat flux, we need uh, an expression for I intensity in terms of uh, theta and phi. All right, so the heat flux here, I mean, this is a scalar heat flux, not the vector. Okay, so we have this d omega become sine theta, where theta is the polar angle, and phi is the azimuthal angle. And if I'm not wrong, I think it should be 4 pi, not 2 pi. Oops. We were discussing it before, if, we were, if it was 2 pi, it will be at the walls. But in general, we have a 4 pi. Okay, so uh, now I want to change variables. So 2 pi is for the azimuthal angle. And 0 to pi will be for the polar angle. So I'm just going to put this integral in here. And... Zero, and the limit should be two pi. Okay, never mind. I will just integrate from zero to two pi, and I'll just copy and paste this chunk in here. And I can delete the old ones, make it uh, correct. So what is i? I theta phi. All right, so um, first thing first, we will need to um, consider what the shape is. What is our shape? What is the shape we are dealing with? First is a plane, 1D plane. Okay, so we will have Two, like parallel plane so this is what we are doing and okay so what next okay so let's say let's say we take a random point for example here and this plane thickness is some optical thickness tau all right. Okay, maybe I won't use tau here. Okay, so normally, um, 
as we were talking in here normally we will have uh, in our earlier like uh, derivations right we have named our tau okay where is that where is that yeah in our early, earlier derivations when we use optical thickness okay where is it yeah in our earlier uh, in our earlier um, earlier definitions we will use tau in this case of course this is uh, based on spectral dependence we'll say tau it will be a fun the intensity is uh, dependent on tau lambda or tau okay but now we in the textbook uh, okay see we use tau in the textbook they use this uh, term tau s so what is the difference between tau and tau s okay so let's talk about uh, you know in general first let's say you have okay you have some arbitrary direction okay where you want to talk about radiation in the direction s so i'll put in the direction si here this is some direction si and of course uh, the answer for the intensity it will be depending on the intensity at the beginning and the intensity that you know is contributed to by each of these source terms which you need to integrate all the way up and okay this this whole length here we normally like to call tau right because this is the optical thickness okay <clears throat> but you see depending on where where we um how we vary s s i as a SF prime okay the length kind of changes okay the length of this uh, optical thickness kind of changes so we will have tau prime okay so how do we deal with this in a 1d plane geometry uh, we see optical thickness uh, vary okay optical thickness tau vary according to fit um, the direction s hat okay so this is the picture we are looking at and of course um, s hat and of course the direction s hat can be described in terms of angle theta n phi so how how do we um so how do we get tau in terms of theta and phi so i mean how do we get tau in terms of theta and phi or s hat so okay again the problem is that depending on where you kind of rotate your direction of s so it depends on what direction you want to consider for your radiation the optical distance kind of changes so how how do we deal with this problem uh, so stay tuned to the next uh, for the next video to find this out and we will discuss it more thanks for watching